gifted and skilled with our communication with our father because then it it helps us to fully maximize and it helps us to fully enjoy what has been provided to us in christ the book of james chapter 1 verse 5 if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of the giving god or let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him next verse but let him ask in faith not in wavering for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the lord the man that is double-minded about the character of god cannot receive anything a double-minded man is unstable because today he believes that god is good tomorrow he believes that god is bad today he believes that god blesses tomorrow he believes that god causes he's a double-minded man concerning the character of god but james gives us god's character he says he is the giving god and he gives to all men generously and he does not find fault amen so we began to look at the fatherhood of god and we began to establish that prayer is much more of relationship with god as taught by the epistles as taught in the new testament the essence of prayer in the new testament is much more of relating with our father than even asking for things of course you will ask for for things things are a byproduct of the relationship so our prayer is relating with our father and we began to look through several scriptures where jesus always tried in the gospels to introduce the concept of the father the father the father he began to introduce it in the gospels and when it got to the epistles it was everywhere all over the place that our relationship with god is a relationship of a father and his sons the emphasis of fatherhood is so important because if you don't understand god as a father and you don't see god as a father you'll not be able to enjoy relating with god in the place of prayer in the book of ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 for this cause i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family is giving you a concept of the fatherhood of god and giving you the concept of a family relationship our father which art in heaven so i bow my knees unto the father of our lord jesus christ of whom the whole family in heaven and on earth this family on earth has a language it is called the household of faith this is the household of faith we are a family we are the household of faith that's the way the epistles records that the household of faith we are not in a covenant relationship with god we are in a family relationship with god god is our father the new covenant was the covenant made in the old covenant the new covenant was the covenant made in the old covenant and fulfilled by the death of jesus fulfilled by the death of jesus so in fulfilling the new covenant that god gave before the old the old became obsolete in fulfilling the new covenant that god gave before the old that new covenant that god gave before the old testament when the old testament demands were fulfilled the new testament enacted in his blood it made the old old watch before jesus died there was no new or old covenant they only had the covenant before jesus died there was no new or old covenant they only had one covenant it was the covenant that is why when they were breaking bread in matthew 26 28 he says for this is my blood of the new testament now when he said new he implied that there will be an old and a new one that is to say there will be a replacement because the new will replace the old it was this new 
that made the Only Testament old. There would have been no old if there was no new. If there was no new, it would be the Testament. What made the Testament old was because a new was introduced. There was the Testament. And everybody knew the testament. And that was the only testament that was available. Now when Jesus began to talk about the new testament in my blood. He implied that this one we are in now will be the old. And a new one will replace the old. So the new testament is not a complement of the old testament rather the new testament is a replacement of the old testament if the old was good there will be no need for the new so you don't have a covenant with god because you don't have a covenant with your father your father is your father you don't have a covenant with your father you have a relationship with your father when god adopted us as his children it was as a result of the promise he gave in the old testament which jesus fulfilled in his death burial and resurrection acts 13 32 and we declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers verse 33 this he has completely fulfilled for us the promise is fulfilled he has fulfilled it for us they lived in the promise we live in the fulfillment they enjoy the promise without having it materialized but we enjoy the materialized promise by raising up jesus as it is now written in the second psalm you are my son that's the whole idea of the fulfillment of the old testament and the introduction of the new testament to bring about a company of sons all god had in his mind was that a day will come when i will have sons And Jesus is the prototokus, the prototype, the model son, after whom all other sons are birthed. Today have I begotten you, caused you to arise, to be born, formally shown you to be the Messiah by the resurrection. By the fulfillment of the Old Testament, his demands and his laws was the resurrection of Christ. When he rose from the dead, he fulfilled everything that the Old Testament demanded. He folded it and took it out of the way and introduced the New Testament, which is a testament of sonship. Why sonship? Because the promise that servants enjoyed which was a promise of giving birth to sons has now been fulfilled because the first son has risen paving the way for other sons to be made manifest am i teaching here yeah paving the way for other sons to be made manifest so all of us sitting here now are we the sons of god Based on that, we are family. A father and his family. That's what the New Testament is about. We are not just his people. We are his family. We are called the household of God. We are, we, our tribe is the tribe of the household of God. Amen? I said amen. Yeah. We have his genes. We have his hereditary. And we have his very life. His genes, his hereditary, his very life. We have his spirit. We have his DNA in us. We are actually born of God. He gave birth to us. He gave birth to us. We are born of him. We have all that is in him in us. 
of his own will begat he us by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creation our father is god and we are family with the godhead we are family with the godhead our family status is called new creation new creation adopted we are adopted placed as sons of god hallelujah again god is called the father of lights in james 1 17. every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the father of lights with whom is no variableness nor a shadow of turning Ephesians 1 17 God is called the father of glory that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he is the father of lights he is the father of glory he is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ Hebrews 12 9 he is the father of spirits furthermore we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live he is the father of light he is the father of glory he is the father of spirits in the new testament introduces us to a concept of god as father the fatherhood of god the father of light the father of spirits the father of glory james 1 5 the giving god who is generous and does not find fault generous and does not find fault and he is qualified as a father our father he is called the caregiver he doesn't look for fault so stop destroying yourself by confessing sins because he's not interested he is not a fault finder it's only a fault finder that will want you to confess your faults but he is not interested in fact in the epistles which is our message he said confess your faults one to another not to me i'm not interested in your faults because the only person you hurt with your faults is yourselves so confess to one another because when you confess you will be healed don't confess to me i am not a fault finder and i'm not interested in your faults because you have a propitiation you have a payment you have a ransom amen i'm teaching here yeah I don't find fault why don't we confess faults to god because in him we have redemption even the forgiveness present continuous the forgiveness of sins not forgiving the forgiveness of sins in him we have redemption even the forgiveness of sins continues so because the forgiveness has been given eternally he does not find fault he doesn't find fault glory to god he doesn't find fault anytime you want to pray just pray just pray you don't need to observe any set of rules in it just pray when you move with your father you don't have to say excuse me daddy can i talk now no you talk hello you just talk and you can talk from anywhere you don't have to arrange how you talk to your father you can start from the end to the beginning and you can start from the middle to the end and then to the beginning because that's your father so god wants you to have the revelation of god as your father so that your relationship will be qualitative i'm teaching here he doesn't find fault oh oh he doesn't find fault he's a loving father praise the lord he's a loving father 
There's nothing like relationship and fellowship with God. You, you know, I thought that some years ago that when you, you have a relationship with God and every time you sin, your fellowship is broken. There's no such thing as relationship and fellowship with God. Both relationship and fellowship with God are the same. You are united with him. You are united with him. It's not like two separate people that are in a relationship and their fellowship can be broken. You are united with him. You and the Lord are one spirit. Am I teaching here? Yeah. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, it's not a feeling. It is a pignosis. It's a knowing by the acknowledging of every good thing that is where? In you. And where are you? In Christ it's not like god is there i am here so i am in a relationship and i have to keep behaving right for that relationship to be valid uh -uh. you and him are joined you are not here he's there you are together lift your right hand and shout i am in him he is in me now say this with me very loud i am bone of his bones i am flesh of his flesh you cannot separate me from him you, haven't you seen that's why Paul speaking said what shall separate us what shall say what shall what shall separate us what shall separate us what shall what shall what shall separate us from the love of God not our love from the love of God which is in Christ where we are so the love of God where we are that brought us that saved us that accepted us will never leave us and there is nothing on earth there is nothing in heaven there is nothing in the world to come and there is nothing yet that the senses have not perceived that has the capacity and audacity to separate us he said not death not life not principality not power not nakedness not peril not sword not things present not things to come it's called eternal security nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus not from our love from his love he is not interested in your love because you don't even have one so he has secured you in his love did you hear that where has he secured you in his love he has secured you in his love he has secured you in his love that's why all our songs have to be adjusted instead of using god in our song we use father because that's the spirit of adoption god has set forth the spirit of his son in our hearts what is that spirit crying so anything that is not abba father is not the cry of the spirit of his son the spirit of his son does not cry jehovah jireh the spirit of his son cries abba father because jehovah jireh is a little segment of abba father Abba Father is the main domain. Jehovah Jireh Nisi, they are segmented revelations of servants. Abba Father is the full revelation of the Father given to those with the spirit of sonship. Lift your right hand, shall thank you, Abba Father. What is that? The spirit of adoption, spirit of sonship. A spirit of sonship. In the place of prayer, when I say, Father, I am taking my place in Christ. Every time I say, Father, I am occupying my place in Christ. Every time. Father, I thank you that you hear me always. I'm occupying my place in Christ. So in the place of prayer, we take our position in Christ. And when you take your place in Christ, you now rule over circumstances and control situations. It's like prayer in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth, how be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. No man understandeth, but in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. 
So when we utter tongues, we are uttering mysteries. First Corinthians 14 verse 4. He that speaketh in a tongue edifieth himself. So when I pray in tongues, I am speaking mysteries and at the same time, I am building myself. The word edify means to build. The word mystery means secrets that cannot be uttered in limited language. When I pray in tongues, I'm speaking mysteries or secrets. And at the same time, I'm praying mysteries, I am edifying myself benefits all over i am edifying myself first corinthians chapter 14 verse 14 for if i pray in a tongue my spirit prayeth but my understanding is unfruitful that is tongues go beyond the scope of my knowledge they go beyond what my mind knows it goes to deal with what my mind does not know tongues take me into the unknown and gives me dominion over the unknown as if I know the unknown tongue takes me into places where my mind cannot take me when I pray in tongues it takes me places my understanding my scope of knowledge cannot get there so therefore it is mesmerized it just becomes unfruitful because where my spirit has entered my mind can't fathom it so when i'm surrounded by things i do not understand what do i do i control them by speaking in an unknown tongue or in tongues and some of us just speak in tongues once a week some of us speak in tongues once a month you're cheating yourself prayer is us exercising authority on the earth but beyond that tongues take us out of the known to the unknown to control things that the mind cannot fathom so even if there was a setup against you somewhere that is supposed to mess up with you in five days time when you pray in tongues you go beyond five days into 10 15 days and control things nothing secures a guaranteed future like fellowshipping with god in mysteries it's not a feeling praying in tongues is not a feeling just like speaking your language is not a feeling you speak it because it's necessary abby yeah? you, you don't have to feel you go to an office where somebody is in charge you need favor from the office and you are in a strange land and then suddenly you discover that that man is from your place and he speaks your language you tell him i'm from your place the moment he knows you're from his place it softens the atmosphere what tongues does is tongues they go into the unknown and tames the unknown for you where things will have been bigger than you tongues will go and shrink it and make it handleable by you so while others are struggling with oversized problems your own they are cut into size not just cut into size they are also conditioned in a way that they become an advantage for your adventure who am i talking to in this place lift your hands and shout i thank god that i pray in tongues more than all of you even if you don't speak it by faith i thank god that i speak in tongues look around you say more than all of you somebody said to me but why will i keep speaking my own is just one syllable i say keep speaking that one and as you speak it another one will be added you know some people their own is kikaka 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 you can get tired of kikaka but if you stay with kikaka for some time from kikaka it will enter kikukukuku so before you know it you have diversity so when you begin to pray in the spirit you are just flowing in different directions you can be there for three hours and not know you've been there for five minutes why because when you begin to speak in tongues you are in the spirit and in the spirit time is suspended 
and when time is suspended you forget time you can be there for one day and think it was five seconds i don't know if i'm talking to somebody and you see when eternity invades time matter don't matter so when you begin to navigate in the spirit you begin to touch situations that are matter and when the eternal touches the matter the matter submits to the eternal he that speaketh in tongues does not speak to men he speaks to the highest authority and how be it in the spirit he is dealing with issues thank you lord take note i will pray in the spirit i will i will so i don't wait for the spirit to come on me to speak it is a decision of my will it is my choice i wake up bolato como i don't have to do thank you jesus <laughs> no 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 you are not hypnotized this is not hypnotism you are in control it is the language given to sons it is the language of sonship once you are adopted into christ this sign shall follow those that believe are you a believer in my name they shall speak with what so tonguing is part of the natural heritage of sons that's why it's a gift you don't need to wait in jerusalem for for 10 days you don't need to fast no the spirit speaking the language is already inside you all you need to do is speak just speak how start by praising god for what is already inside you and as you begin to praise what is inside you what is inside will take over the praise glory to god first corinthians 14 15 what is it then i will pray with the spirit and i will pray with the understanding also just the same way i say father i thank you because you're good to me it's a decision of my will i can also say engro nangro tokobo lodobonga le mahonda so same way i go like glory be to god in the highest amen for his mercies endure it forever Amen. I can also go. Mangron tekele jeboroko sebra. You don't have to wait for Holy Ghost to give you the song. It is a decision of your will. The tone may sound the same, but the lyrics are not the same. Because the spirit is taking over to determine what utterance is coming out of the song. It has melody, but you are not in control of the subject. Because the spirit knows what you need more than you do. So he is putting the articulate thing, the right thing that is needed for that time in that melody. So you are enjoying yourself with a melody, but you are dealing with future and present situations with the lyrics. What did I say? I sang. Have you have had it before? You don't need to hear it before. Sing unto the Lord a new song. You are the one that have problem because you have been programmed like a computer a spirit man is flexible he goes the way of the spirit i will pray with the understanding also and i will sing with the spirit and i will sing just the same way i sing with understanding is the same way i sing with the spirit it's a decision of my will I will I will thank you Lord. verse 16 first Corinthians 14 16 else when thou shalt bless with the spirit how shall he that occupy the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of tongues seeing he understanding not what thou sayest so what he's saying is if they say brother stand up and round up the prayer stand up round up the prayer 
You don't stand up and go. Egere to kobolo to gaboje klene mbrando golo do borokoto nege borokote nege bohoda. Nobody knows what you're talking about. So in rounding up a church service prayer, you pray in English so that we can all agree to say amen. But when it has to do with personal prayer, you pray in the spirit. Because you are the one praying, you know when to say amen. I don't know if you understand. I'm clearing this because some people use this to say, but it's not good to speak in tongues because if you speak in tongues, nobody will understand. For your personal prayer and for corporate prayers in the church where everybody is having a nice time, you are free to express yourself. But when we say now, round up the prayer for us before we eat the food. You don't look at the food and go, a go botola. We don't know what you're talking. He said, thank you, Father, for this food. It is blessed. And all of us will say, Amen. Because we understand what you're saying. Paul was just putting order when it comes to praying in the spirit and in the house. Is it getting clear? Because we're dealing with prayer and we've got to cover every area. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praying in the spirit with all perseverance. That's what Paul said in the book of Ephesians. With all perseverance. First Timothy 2 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, and giving of thanks be made for all men. And how many of you saw when Paul was talking about praying in the spirit? He said that the man who does not understand your tongues, how can he know how to say amen when you give thanks? That means when you pray in tongues, also there are times praying in tongues is all thanksgiving. And that is when you give thanks very well. Because the spirit knows the quality of thanksgiving that ought to be given to the father. And he will help you. He will assist. Amen. I pray in tongues more than ye all, Paul said. And some for the prayers of supplication, one of the strongest weapons that will assist you to pray the prayers of supplication very well is tongues. Prayers of supplication. We pray them in English and we pray those prayers in tongues because tongues will help you to supplicate very well. You supplicate. And I'm going to deal with groaning and I'm going to deal with bodings in prayer. Groanings in prayer. Scriptural. I'm going to show you all of that. You supplicate. You supplicate. You supplicate. You pray. You pray. You pray. You pray. You pray. You pray. You supplicate. And when you supplicate, there are times the spirit will seize you. Will seize you with a body. Where you can't even stop. Even if you wanted to stop, you won't even know how to stop. Because there's a burden on you to push a little more in prayer until the situation is dealt with. So you're trying to stop, but you're not able to stop. Ilamako, Katanaga, they are clapping hand. You're not able to stop. So you have to look for a corner somewhere quietly to continue. And sometimes a burden can be on you for three months. You, it's not lifting. You are praying, but it's still there. So you stay there and stay there because you have no idea of things you are fixing that the spirit has found you available to use to fix. Watch this. How many of you have ever woken up in the midnight at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., you know, whatever time? And as you just turned, your eyes cleared completely. Every sleep disappeared. And you don't know what to do. The Holy Ghost woke you up to pray. The Spirit alerted you to pray. But because you've not been taught, you just feel like, ah, but why am I awake? You are not supposed to ask. You are supposed to know. What am I going to pray? No, you don't need to know what to pray. Just begin. For you to be that awake and quickened, there is the master's work somewhere needs somebody to supplicate. You just start praying. When you start praying at that time, when you really give yourself to prayer, when it finally it's over, the Holy Ghost has a way of bringing the situations around you to know what happened and why you were woken up. And I know what I'm talking about. 
Some of you, you wake up like that and your eyes shine and everything is clear. You go and carry music and start dancing. As if you woke yourself. Or you put television and start watching uh, African magic. Uh -huh. You are woken by the spirit because you are born of the spirit to take care of things that the senses don't understand. And instead of giving yourself to prayer, you start watching African magic. And then when things don't work out the way they ought to work out, you wonder why. When you were woken up to fix them, you were watching magic. You won't fail. Your future is secured. Your destiny is guaranteed. Your mission on earth will be fulfilled. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, you will conquer territories. You will break frontiers. You will take over situations. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout, I receive manifested grace. I didn't hear your amen. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. According as his divine power hath given. Is he going to give us? He hath. Somebody say I have. Say I have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Say it again. I have right now all things that pertain to life and godliness in Christ. I didn't hear your amen. He has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness manifested through the epignosis of him that had called us to glory and virtue. The word virtue is power. He has called us to glory and power. He has not called us to glory and weakness. He has not called us to glory and failure. He has called us to glory and power. He has not called us to shame and weakness. He has called us to glory and power. Therefore, we live lives of glory and power because that's our calling. And the power to make it happen is already at work in us. He had given unto us. He will not Christianity is not a call to come and be looking for supply. It's a call to supply. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the epignosis, the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and power. Not glory and weakness. Glory and power. Say with me, power is locked up on my inside. I give it expression by knowledge that's right glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss you have escaped having escaped the corruption so he has called us to power so when we are praying we are praying from a position of strength our call is a call to power we are not praying from a position of weakness we are praying from a position of strength ephesians 3 20 according to the power that worketh in us there is the energy the power that is at work strength in the inner man Strength. Strengthened by his mind. There's power at work in us. The Pauline prayers are not mere requests. They are actually the answers. Pauline prayers is praying the answers. The prayer of Paul are not requests. The prayers of Paul is praying the answers i don't know if i'm talking here <laughs> the prayers of paul are not requests they are the answers that paul is praying there are no requests in the epistles let me shock you you will never see prayer for things in the holy epistles from Romans to Revelation, there are no prayer for things. Because the believer is not supposed to be praying for things. After these things, the Gentiles seek. Actually, in the Holy Epistles, there are only two prayers that sound like prayer for things. Third John verse 2. Huh? And Philippians 4, 6. They sound like, but when they are even properly interpreted, 
in the light of scripture, you find that they are not prayerful things. We are praying the expected end. We are not praying requests. We are praying, we are praying answers. We are speaking the expected end. Calling the things that be not as though they were. We are speaking the expected end. You didn't hear that? Yeah. We are speaking the expected end. That's what the polite prayers are. That's why I could say in Ephesians 3.15 of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named verse 16 that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that he be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height and to know the love of christ which passes knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of god now these things he has said the answers are according to the power verse 20 that is at work in us he spoke the answers and showed you the source of power to engineer the materialization of the answers that's the prayer of the new testament man because the new testament man has the spirit of knowledge. He's not confused. He's not doting about nothing. He has the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of wisdom. So we pray the end result. Amen. We pray what? The end result. So the ability we have in Christ therefore has the capacity to achieve those previous verses has the capacity to achieve 16 17 18 19 the ability to achieve it is in us it's not going to come from heaven it's in us have i taught you that answers don't come from heaven where do answers come from the power that is at work in us that's what it can do it's not what god can do it is what the power in us can do that's what God can do in us by the power deposited. So listen carefully. We hold the answers to our prayers. We are the ones that are holding the answers to our prayers. We hold it. We determine the answers. Take note of what I'm saying. We determine the answers to our prayers. Romans 15 30. Now I beseech you brethren for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. You strive together with me because the power to make it happen is within us here. So you strive together with me in prayers. You strive together with me. It shows that we have the capacity to make this happen strive with me in prayer strive 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 with me in prayer because the capacity to make it happen is in us strive with me in prayer that is to say the request is not beyond the ability of what we have in christ that's why i say strive with me that means whatever i need is within our ability in christ am i teaching here if you understand it, shout a good amen yeah it's within the ability in christ so we are not praying what we don't know we are praying answers when we pray that's why we call it harvest of answers we are praying answers we are making ability available for the answers we are announcing when we pray we are announcing answers and as we are announcing the answers in prayer we are making ability that will make the answers materialize available we are announcing the answers the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him in the knowledge of him the eyes of my understanding be enlightened be enlightened be enlightened as you are praying the answers in that prayer you are unleashing the ability to power those answers to materialize so 
the answers are within my ability in Christ. Say, I hear you. I hear you. The polite prayers are prayers of end results. It's not like father we don't know what you want but we are just praying in case you are interested in what we are saying even like jesus said not my will but yours be done if you are a total bunch of confusion we know we know we have knowledge praise the lord somebody getting blessed let your amen be louder than your neighbors somebody say we know can i hear you say it again so we're lifting our voice to make that ability possible for the things to come to pass that's what prayer is lifting our voice to make that ability possible for the things we are saying to come to pass we don't pray for power we pray because we already have power we don't pray for power we pray because we already have power to make what we are saying happen. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man, what does he do? It is making tremendous power what? Available. That is dynamic in producing what we are saying. Am I communicating here? Yeah. We are not praying for power. We are making power available. When we pray, we are making power available. When we pray, we are making power available. Prayer is sweet. When you know what it is. When you don't know what it is, it's a body. But when you know what it is, it is sweet. So if nothing is changing, what do we do? We pray. If in your life you see that your situations are not changing, everything is at a standstill, know that you have not made power available that will change and rearrange things. To know the exceeding greatness of his power to us, to us world or toward us, according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead the exceeding the hooper balloon dunamis energio those are the three Greek words in one verse heavy heavy words the hooper balloon dunamis energio hooper balloon means to go beyond target you are targeting a car when you shoot that prayer it not only gets a car it adds a house to it hooper balloon dunamis means dynamite that is to say that this power carries with it a dynamite that when you make it available it will explode when it explodes it changes and rearranges things so if there was somebody in an office that has been sitting on your promotion when this power explodes he is sacked somebody that is close that will favor you is employed what happened you prayed and made power available and this power has with it a quality of dynamite which exploded and changed and rearranged things so people look at you and say ah your own things are always working yeah because i am making power available in the place of prayer am i teaching here i said am i teaching here listen to me tonight i speak over you by the power of the holy ghost nothing will embarrass you any longer somebody say the power that changes things is on my inside i will make it available in the place of prayer i didn't hear your amen Changes and rearranges things. Changes and rearranges things. I don't know who I'm talking to here. If you're hearing me say, I hear you. Look, we are not helpless. We are not hopeless. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. Right inside you is the power that raised Christ from the dead. 
what is inside you the power that raised christ so anything that could not defeat christ cannot defeat you by the by yano go shock but the get it by that power that is inside you if the spirit that raised christ from the dead dwell it where what shall happen he shall make alive he shall make alive they tell you it's cancer look at the cancer in the face and tell it no further shall they hear of you not in this body not in this body i am bought with a price therefore i glorify god in this body anything that cannot be found in christ cannot be found here this is the temple of the holy ghost i am what that raised christ from the dead is what gave back to you that is the same power that gave back to you the same the same just make it available and the rest is history make it available do what And how do you make it available? Effectual, fervent, heartfelt. Heartfelt. When the prayer is coming from your heart by revelation, you forget where you are. You can start that prayer here and end up under the gallery. Is that true? Because as you're moving, you're not aware of where you are. Because your heart has been arrested by the passion of that prayer. But one thing is sure. Power has been made available. Anything can happen. It makes a tremendous power available. Things are not changing in your life. You are telling the same story every day for five years. Meanwhile, the power to change it is inside you. The only thing is that you have not made it available. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Take one night and deny yourself sleep. And just go in tongues for seven hours make up your mind once and for all this nonsense ends just make too much power available that is why we say there is no future for a lazy christian victory is not for lazy christians if you want victory you must overcome laziness you must wake up and give yourself to prayer we will give ourselves it's a deliberate act of the will we will give ourselves to prayer we will give our that is we will carry ourselves and abandon inside prayer we abandon ourselves there then watch and see that you're under grace doesn't mean you won't pray that is when you pray You're sitting down poverty is finishing you poverty is eating you it's eating you and you're looking i say father where are you say not say not in your heart who shall go to heaven to bring christ down or who shall go to the grave to wake christ up but what said it the word is nigh thee, even in your heart and your that is the word of faith it's inside you so don't be looking for god God is inside you. Let him lose. Is any afflicted? Eh? Is any afflicted? He didn't say let him look for God. Let him pray. That is, let him make power available. Let him pray. Let him pray. This is what my spirit in Christ can do. The ability is in me in Christ. So that's why supplication prayers, you have the word always. Paul calls it travel. My little children of whom I travel. The word travel means I give birth. 
travel is what a woman does when she's about to deliver and she falls what is happening to the woman she's traveling to bring out there's a point you come in prayer where you are about to produce a vision a new phase a new direction a new level where prayers are no more two hands in the pocket egemoga ula boja kula magengre elebo kalaba kalaba you are making younger when it gets to that point where you want to give back a anoga even a girl that used to make younger miss america miss nigeria when she entered labor world in fact she would tear her face then she would dance one kind she would keep her leg why because when that time comes everything in you comes alive because something is about to come out the same thing that happened to christ when he was about to rise from the dead all of god's power was muzzled together to push out the new man hear me the time of young guy is over you can't be making young guy with poverty embarrassing you it is time to tell yourself the power to make me succeed is inside me i'm going to make it available somebody shout i'm going to make it available I refuse to blame my mother i refuse to blame my father is a failure spirit i refuse to blame my boss and i refuse to blame that guy that i was looking up to it is not in their hands the power is inside me i will make it how available how do you make it available in prayer There's time to pray and God prayer. Hula mo gogo gosh. Eke bodaga. Hula monga. Krona gogo sekea. That time do. But a time comes when you are tired of being in a phase of life where you must start another phase. You have exhausted all your options and if nothing happens embarrassment will slap your face and it will not be god's failure it will be a failure to have made power which is inside you available so now you settle down you bring your knees down and you say enough is enough now listen to me i prophesy over you this night the grace you need to change your world receive it now I say receive it now. Amen. I say receive it now. Amen. I say receive it now. Amen. I say receive it now. Ah. Brothers approach you before you say Jack, they leave you. Five have approached you. They leave you. And the power to arrest one of them is inside you. But laziness will not allow you make it available. When they say come for prayer meeting you sit down and be painting your nails painting your nails painting your nails will not bring your husband you can be without paint and marry a painted man come for prayer meeting you sit down inside saloon they are doing you bob Marley hair seven hours you are not tired when you come for prayer once it is 45 minutes you are checking time but when they do you bob Marley hair you don't check time shouldn't you see that something has deceived you oh foolish galatians who has bewitched you i'm teaching here you can sit down with nollywood movie nine hours because each one is three three hours part one and part two part one and part two part one and part two you are sitting down in your house from 8 a.m it is 4 30 p.m you are not even aware of time even food you didn't eat you are sitting there wasting nine hours yet when you come to pray and they push it beyond one hour you are restless it's a wonder you're the way you are men of prayer men of prayer nobody jokes with them nobody 
nobody even comes close because all the time power is available around them there's a way you will generate too much prayer around you even when you're not praying power is radiating you move into places things are just happening without you talking because there's too much power reserve power because you have made available so much you will never fail stand up let's close somebody say very loud i will make power available say it again say it very loud in prayer the doctor say you cannot have children then you look at your house rats are running all over the place rats are producing till you are using medicine to stop them even with the medicine they are still manufacturing then you they say you cannot have children are ye not of more value than these you doctor is telling you cannot have you cockroaches under your roof are manufacturing and you remember jehovah said be fruitful be be and he never says stop he said be so if you like you continue you will die to stop will be your decision you are overqualified yet no job you're moving around they're busy posting you and the power to generate jobs is inside you i declare over you tonight wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice whatever has been the delay the resistance around you is terminated now it's terminated now it's terminated now it's terminated now somebody say i will pray say it again i will pray look at the way james put it elias was a man of like passion but i love that but he prayed earnestly earnestly that it may not rain what stopped the rain was his prayer three and a half years he held the skies men are sweating cloud refused to form a man's prayer under the old testament joshua looked at the sun the sun was not favoring israel he says stop sun stood under the old covenant you in the new testament things are molesting you and you're waiting for god to intervene father father intervene father and father is saying you intervene you you are saying father father is saying you because let them not let us let them how many of you understand what i'm teaching today nobody is responsible for where you are but you where you will be is your responsibility the power is inside you the exceeding greatness of his power to us word according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ where is christ in you where is the power in you lift your right hands jesus i honor you thank you for light thank you for revelation thank you for your word thank you for the things you're teaching us thank you for building us in this building those watching on television on the internet around the world thank you because you're raising an army of people that will pray and change this world so i speak over your people under the sound of my voice receive a stirring on your inside in the mighty name of jesus i flush out laziness procrastination i flush out procrastination i rebuke procrastination i rebuke laziness in the name of jesus the grace to change to pray and color your world receive it now i decree that by the power of the holy ghost the help you need in prayer is already available so i declare that every prayer you've been expecting to be answered the answer is inside you you will make power available you will make power available 
I rebuke the devil. I rebuke his cohorts. I resist delays. I cancel disappointments. I destroy stagnation. I declare by the power locked up on your inside, it is unlocked right now. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, move to the next level. Move to the next level. Whatever looks like shame and embarrassment around you, I tear them off. I tear them off. I speak over the first 1,000 of you whose amen will come like thunder in this building. The next time they shall hear of you after today, it will be glory and power. It will be glory and power. It will be glory and power. All those that left you to be ashamed and abandoned you to be disgraced, I declare they will look up to you for glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will color your world. You will change your world. You will beautify your world. You are blessed above all nations. You are called to power. You are called to power. You are called to power. You will not be weary. You will not faint. You will not slumber. You are called to power. In the name of Jesus. Lift your two hands for 30 seconds. Blast in tongues. Pray in tongues. Make power available. Bratokano hegebayo. Ah, shakonda laborokoto sekele de boho. Make power available. Make power available. It's inside you. Make it available. Rato labaha. Rato, rato labaha. Jeto, kerena, orago, shakara. Elaba, rako de kerene, kelaba. Egabo, sekele, negere, tegega. Egarado, gegayada. Egabo, shekere, negeba. Make power available. Make power available. Build up your most holy faith. Rise up like an edifice. Make power, tremendous power. Make tremendous power available, dynamic in his workings. Mranda gosakele, egebo zatana, agarada gaboho, elebo jakarana gagaga, elebo babo, elebo babo, elebo babo, elebo babo, elebo babo, elebo babo. Mranda gosakele rebo sa, elebo rebo shakaya nama, elebo zante, elebo zante, elebo raga. Pray, pray, pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Speak mysteries. Speak mysteries. Speak mysteries. Control circumstances. Control situations. Helabo shete. Control situations. Lambo rasuta la namaha. Helabo shakara da gabasota. Helabo shakara da gabasoya. Helabo rokota gabadoga da gaboya da gabadoga ga. Helabo shakara ta. Helabo rokota kelebo rokota ga. Helabo rokota si kelena ma. Angre ne ga ga ga. Angre ne ga bo shaya. Aga sobaya. 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 Mazo. You have power with God. Prevail over men. Praise your Father. Begin to give Him thanks. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the working of your mighty power that is at work within us. Thank you for results. Thank you for results. Thank you for results. Thank you for results. Thank you for solutions. Thank you for answers. Thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for favors. Thank you for increase. Thank you for enlargements. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name.